bit on that and we'll get going shortly. Okay, good afternoon everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Natasha Exton and I'm the Head of Admissions at Prague City University. We're delighted to have you join us from wherever you're watching this from around the world. Um, it's very apt to host a virtual open day for us because many of our students um, travel to Prague for the first time for their studies and we have a very international audience. So if you're watching us on Facebook, please feel free to put in um, the chat function where you're joining us from. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll also make sure they get answered as we go. And if you're um, watching this on the Zoom webinar, please also be free, feel free to let us know where you're watching from uh, and what you're interested in studying so we can make sure any questions you have are also answered. So I'm really delighted to be joined by the full admissions team today, um, my colleagues Anna, Alice and Alexa. And we also have the student Anna, who is with us today as well, who you'll be hearing from a little bit later on. So um, we're going to get started with a very brief um, introduction to who we are. Obviously, um, for those of you who have registered for today's event, you'll know a little bit about us already. Um, but our university offers both British and Czech degrees and diplomas. If you study on one of our British degrees, then your final award will come from Teesside University, which is a university based in the northeast of England. But what's different to studying um, either in the UK, or indeed perhaps at a larger um, Czech university, is that, as I mentioned, we have a very international environment here. So students really do come from all over the world, as well as locally. So um, within your class, you could really be uh, the only person from the country that you're from. And typically, the language that is used um, throughout the university is, is English. Um, so your teaching is in English on your programme, but even in the corridors and things, you'll, you'll hear everybody uh, getting on in English typically. We have a very practical approach um, and keep our class sizes small. Um, I'm not going to spend too long talking about that now because you'll hear about how that works um, within each of our schools and in the specific programmes. So we offer four schools and how this the structure of today's event will work is we're going to introduce you and give you an overview of all of the programs. We're going to show you some videos as well to give you some greater insight into some of our students' work and um, what the city of Prague looks like, perhaps if you've never been before. Um, and also just to get some different insights into the types of activities you can do outside of your studies, uh, which I think Anna will also talk a little bit more about later on. So um, if you do have um, specific questions about our programs, we'll try and make sure they're answered as we go through. But you're also welcome after the event today um, to get in touch with us. We can send you further information. And also we'd be happy to have an individual call with you as well. So at this point, I'd like to um, hand over, I believe, to Anna, who's going to start off by introducing our School of Art and Design. Thank you. So um, welcome everyone. My name is Anna, as you all see. I'm happy that uh, you join our event. And as Natasha said, I'm gonna start with the uh, School of Art and Design. Um, you might already know that uh, we offer bachelor's and master's degrees accredited in the UK. Um, so School of Art and Design offers actually two bachelor programs and two master's programs and also one foundation diploma which I'm going to explain in a bit what, uh, what is this program. Um, all of these art or design programs they do culminate in a final exhibition in the end of the study so that is a big moment for all students actually at um, School of Art and Design. It's a first opportunity to display their work like in a real public setting and we are actually going to see some of the work captured um, in the video uh, because my colleague is going to uh, play um, a video from, um, from the final exhibitions. So um, first, um, first bachelor degree that I'm going to talk about is bachelor in uh, graphic design. Um, you can now see our second campus, actually, Bishop's Court. Um, it's close to Prague One, close to the historical center of Prague. Um, and that's where these students, they displayed their they work. Um, 
The graphic design program is a practical studio-based program um, that encourages independent learning and problem solving. Um, our students, they develop their skills in typography, corporate identity design, web editorial design or packaging or even motion graphics. Um, so you probably know that um, these students, they work um, in uh, graphic design software. So uh, as a graduate, you are fully, you know, fully capable to, to, command, um, to command the graphic design software such as Adobe, Adobe Suite. Um, but maybe it's, it's also good to say um, that it is not purely like technically program. So um, students are taught um, to think critically um, about design as well. So they would be invited by teachers to think how design can influence the society. So there is this social element um, in the program too. Um, as students, you would be working in live um, studio environment and also engaging in real client work, um, especially in the second and third year. Um, so that's, um, that would be graphic design program. Um, if uh, some of you are interested in this program, um, we would be happy to share with you our portfolio requirements. Um, for this program, it is essential to submit a portfolio of graphic design works uh, as part of the application and we can send you the detailed requirements. Basically, it's, um, it's important for us to see that you're familiar already with um, the basic functions of the graphic design programs. Um, the second um, undergraduate program we offer at School of Art and Design is Fine Art Experimental uh, Media. This program is also a studio-based uh, program, a practical program that um, prepares students uh, to become professional artists. So um, students on this program, um, they are interested in different kinds of media, especially the new media. Um, but I would like to say that the idea, the, the, the key is kind of to, to integrate, as you can actually see now on the, on the video that my colleague is, is showing, the idea is to integrate, to combine new media with the traditional, traditional techniques. So, for, exa for example, so that you can better picture it, uh, you would also learn like the really the technical skills that you, you need to have in order to use the, um, the programs. So you would learn how to uh, code, um, you know, decoding for websites and applications, or for example, video and sound editing and production. Um, this program also covers theory and professional development classes. That means that you learn how to describe and also curate your work. Um, and you would also learn how to manage a budget for an exhibition and how to display your works in a, in a public setting. So all this is meant to help you, you know, to prepare you for future so that you can, you can work as a, as a free, freelancer, as an artist. So in this case, in this program, the final exhibition is really, um, um, is really a big moment and students are preparing for it the entire uh, final year. Um, they have their own studio space and you can actually now see uh, some of the, yeah, some of the works um, in the video. So I hope you can now um, uh, picture it better. And for this program, we do also need a portfolio of, um, of works um, so that we, we know that uh, you are, you understand the content of the program and you're able to present some pieces that you create uh, with the new media. And um, for some of you who are thinking about joining School of Art and Design, but you do not have the portfolio yet, we do also have an option. Um, it's our foundation diploma program in art, design and media practice. So that could be an option. And um, if, you, if you graduate with us on a bachelor program, um, you are welcome to continue um, further on the master's level. So we do offer two master's program, a master in fine art and future design. 
So I hope that was helpful and um, I will ask um, Alexa, I think, or Alice <laughs> to continue, thanks. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about our school of business. Um, in this school, we have two master's programs and two bachelor's programs, as well as one foundation diploma in business. So our foundation diploma is um, also one year, like the foundation diploma in art, design, and media practice. Um, and this helps you prepare to enter into a full bachelor's program at, in this school. So maybe you're not quite sure which area of business you're most interested in, um, or if you need more practice studying in English or don't quite have the right qualification yet, it's a one-year preparatory program to help you feel confident to enter into a full bachelor's degree. Our bachelor's in international finance and business accounting is a more specific bachelor's degree. So if you already know that you want to go into finance or be an accountant, then this is a great program for you. Our bachelor's in international management program is more of a general degree. So if you're looking to do something like human resource management, or maybe you want to be a manager, but not quite sure which area, then this is a great starting point for your career. Both of these bachelor's degrees run for three years, um, and you will receive that British bachelor's degree when you finish. We also have two master's programs. So our leadership and strategic management program is offered in the intensive format, which runs for three semesters. So it can be completed in 12 to 18 months. So this program is what we call an industry integrated degree. So we ask that students are working and have at least two years of experience in a related area. Uh, it's kind of designed for working professionals who would like to further their career, um, gain positions in higher level management, work at the executive level, sit on boards of their companies. So it's kind of to further, further your, your career path that way. Our master's in international management, this can be taken in either the intensive or the standard format. So the standard format runs for four semesters and can be completed in 24 to 30 months, depending on when you submit your dissertation. So this program is great because it's open to all areas of previous study. So for example, if you studied a bachelor's program in our School of Art and Design, you're also welcome to further your studies in management. So there's no requirement for, for subject area. Some of our current, current students have backgrounds in law or psychology or music, just to kind of give you an, an idea of, of the different areas that our students pursue. Um, this degree will really help you work in international settings, become a more globally minded manager, um, and work on those cultural relations in, in the workplace. All of these programs are designed to make you feel confident in working in the field when you finish. So it's mostly project-based. So you'll have projects, papers, presentations, things like that. So you, you won't really have big exams that you cram and study for and then forget the information afterwards. But we want you to, to know, know the information and feel good about getting a job afterwards. We also do offer tuition towards our ACCA and SEMA professional qualifications. So you can do these separately um, online from any of our programs, or you can also gain tuition towards those as part of the degrees. These programs are also offered through the global blended format, which you can learn more about if um, the program that you're looking for has it. Uh, and please be aware that the leadership and strategic management program is actually only offered through this format. So this means that you would study from where you're located and then come to Prague for residential blocks throughout your studies.
Thanks, Alexa. Um, School of Education is actually the most recent, um, recent School of Prague City University. Um, its aim is to prepare students to be um, professional educators. And the approach um, is based on a combination of theory and practice. So that, that is the same as, um, as on our other, other schools. Um, the school offers at the moment two, um, two programs, two study programs. Um, we offer the Czech accredited bachelor, bachelor degree in specialized education, teaching English as a foreign language. So um, this program covers uh, different areas. Um, for example, the study of English as a foreign language. Um, so students who are joining this program they are typically at, um, their skills are typically at uh, B2 level, for example, and um, this program will help them um, to, to develop their skills uh, to a deeper level, so up to C1 or C2, according to the European framework of languages. Um, the program also covers the um, educational, psychological and linguistical component of teacher training, so that you are as a graduate, you are fully prepared um, to be a professional professional teacher. So um, that brings me to the third um, third important um, component area of study, which is teaching practice. Actually, so this is really the 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 key component I would say in this program. Um, the teaching practice takes place in, uh, in small groups. Um, it includes um, immediate uh, feedback from teachers or your peers and students complete um, a total of 480 hours of pedagogical practice in this program so that you really feel confident, um, confident in, this, um, in this profession. Um, you also have an opportunity to earn advanced credit and, um, and earn the Cambridge CELTA certificate. So I'm not sure if you're aware um, what is it, but um, this certificate um, qualifies um, its holders to teach English practically anywhere in the world. Um, so that's, um, that's a very good uh, prestigious um, qualification. Um, the program um, is currently delivered in English and in Czech as well for some of the classes in the first year, but we are now preparing um, to open it for um, English speaking students only uh, from September 2022. Um, the other program that School of Education offers is a professional qualification um, teaching English at Czech secondary schools. So um, this program, um, uh, this program is for three semesters only. Um, it's for um, working professionals typically who um, hold a master's degree already. Um, they have very good English skills and they are looking um, to change their career basically. So um, this program would give them the qualification to be fully qualified to teach at Czech public um, secondary schools. Um, so that's, um, that's hopefully clear and that, that's, um, that's it for School of Education. Thanks. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Alice um, and I'll be giving you more information in the School of Media and IT. Um, so in the School of Media and IT, we have um, two bachelor's degrees and one master's. Um, the first uh, one I'll be speaking about and um, our current student Anna will be helping us is the Creative Media Production Program. Um, so Anna, I will let you speak and maybe share your student experience um, today. Sure. Um, so as was said, my name is Anna. Um, I am currently in my second year of the creative media production program. And to tell you a bit about it, it's something that incorporates the ins and outs of media production, but with a cre more creative approach and including things that kind of aim to develop your social awareness about production in itself. 
So there's also theory in addition to technical skills being taught. So you learn how to use a camera and also what impact what you make has on the world around us. Um, so with that, last year, for example, we were working on documentaries. So we had to present what ethics are to be considered for this project, to have a proposal, and were helped along the way in pre-production, production, and then post-production. And with that, we kind of delivered um, a final product. So me and my peers, we all kind of had our own documentary, which was on a topic that we were interested in, and we could choose that. Then this year, we're going to be now developing a group project. So we get to work all together and develop like a narrative or whatever we really want to and create it by just somehow combining different platforms. So we have to be able to adapt that one story into different platforms. And in addition to that, we're also going to be working with different clients. So I know some of the people in my class are going to be working with the National Institute for Autism to create the, a project for them that will then help them do what they do, which is something very meaningful. And I'm going to be working for the documentary film festival in Yehlava, helping them out. So that's something, again, I don't think I'd ever probably get the chance to do without the pro program. So I'm very grateful for that. So it's very fun and you kind of get to let your creative spirit loose, but you also have to understand what that impact is from that. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, so that was our first bachelor's degree, the Creative Media Production Program, but we also have a second one, which is a bachelor's degree in computing. Um, it can be approached via two paths. There is a multimedia one, which concentrates on digital media, 3D modeling, and also game design. Um, and then there is the second path, which is cybersecurity, um, which covers network security security and secure application development. And then our uh, master's degree in the School of Media and IT is in computing as well. And it is for students who would like to develop their skill um, at the highest level. Uh, both computing programs, as you can see, they are available in the global blending learning format. So in addition to your studies, we also have a variety of events that you can get involved in and different student organizations. So I'll actually turn it back over to Anna. Um, I know she's very involved with our student council and I think maybe some other events too. So you can maybe tell us a bit more about that. Sure. So in addition to being in my second year of creative media production, I'm also the communications officer for the student council. So there's a couple of like leadership roles in the student council, which students fill. And right now we're actually going to be having elections for those. So then new students can have the opportunity to join and be more involved. What the student council does is we kind of act as the voice for the students in a way, and also just plan events for students. So it's student events made by the students. <laughs> and what we've been doing is that we recently were organizing, we have meetings regularly where we discuss any issues that may have arisen and also we plan events. That's a big thing for our student council. We plan any student events. Um, so currently we're actually planning the Halloween party, which is gonna be taking, pretty taking place pretty soon and stuff like that. Also the, wel the annual welcome party is a big part of that and things like this. So oh, yeah, it's a very great way to get involved and kind of be closer to the student body and be more engaged with them. So yeah, it's a good time. You should join if you do sign up. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Uh, so in addition to different student events that you can get involved with, uh, we also have different speaker series for each of our schools. So for example, example, our School of Business, we have our master speaker series. Uh, our School of Media and IT has our Media Innovation and Technology series. Our School of Art and Design has our vis Visiting Artist and Lecture series. And then our School of Education, we have our Excellence in Learning and Teaching series. So actually our 
uh, visiting artist and lecture series. There is an event tomorrow at six o'clock um, European time uh, that will be uh, through our Facebook. So even not as a student, you're welcome to kind of check that out and watch those those events. Um, through through these different series, we invite different professionals from a variety of areas to speak about their their different areas of expertise. Um, our students are able to ask questions and learn about new things, uh, even you know different areas of their their um, their studies. Uh, our students also put on some different art exhibitions or performances that aren't just their final shows, so they they can kind of put those on throughout the year. Um, and we have a number of student societies that is possible to join. So some of the ones that we currently have include our Clay Society. Um, we have our Unmute, which is a music society. Uh, we have our Checkmate, so our, our gaming club as well. Um, so as you can see, they're kind of all different topics, different fields. Uh, there's a film society, art society, um, and reading society. So kind of all different different areas. If there's something that looks great, then you're welcome to join. If you see or think of something that isn't there yet, and you think, ah, I, I, want, I want to have that too, you're welcome to create a new one. So we're always open to ideas and our advisors and student services team is, is happy to help you open that and, and create something new. Perfect, thank you, uh, Alexa and everybody. And just a quick note at this point that our student Anna um, has had to leave for a class. Um, but if you actually want to get in touch with a student from your program um, and hear a bit more directly about their experience as well, that's also possible to do. So um, just get in touch with your admission advisor and we can put you in touch with somebody who's studying what you're considering studying as well. But hopefully hearing from Anna has just um, given you some insight into yeah, that it's possible to be um, involved not only with your program, but things outside of your studies as well. And similar to those events that Alexa has just been mentioning too. We also um, try within the university to connect all four of our schools. So something that is um, across all of our programs is that we have quite small uh, class sizes. So that could be um, in art and design around 14 students, uh, business maybe up to 20 in um, creative media production and computing, and it can also be around the 15 mark, for example. So you really get to know your classmates, you get to know the other students and you get to know your lecturers as well. Um, but we also are mindful that you know you want to interact with students across all four of the schools. So we have an annual theme which brings our students together to consider some of the wider world issues and the things that are happening uh, right now. So the current one is called Be the Change. And that's really about um, being empowered to drive change for yourself. So obviously, um, you know, we, we still have the pandemic ongoing um, around uh, climate change, lots of issues that we face within humanity. Um, and this is a great place for you to come together and either integrate through your studies as research projects or just have events in another space um, to talk about and think about how to build kind of resilience um, and how these things affect our lives and how we can get through them together. So that's our annual theme um, that we really encourage all students to engage with where possible. There's also other initiatives um, throughout your studies that really can help you beyond what you're learning in the classroom. So that might be guest workshops um, or lectures like you heard about just before, uh, but we also have access to the LinkedIn learning platform. So some of your study resources might be coming from there, or if you want to learn something different to complement your area, you can find a course um, through that. There's also university-wide courses, so applied philosophy is one of those. Um, a, an architecture class is another one that we have introduced. So that's a way as well that if you're new to the city or even if you've lived in Prague your entire life, it's a way for you to connect in a different way with the city, learn more about the architecture. And again, that's open to all students. Um, 
also to complement your studies that are study abroad um, opportunities as well so for example within computing we work closely um, with a school an engineering school based in Paris that offer a summer school in robotics for example um, depending on your program there might be the opportunity as well for um, a study abroad semester um, or depending on the structure of your program and what level you're at um, for kind of an internship as well could be a possibility there. Something that hopefully has become apparent as we've been introducing the programmes is this um, practical nature. Now, we appreciate that at the end of your um, undergraduate or even master's studies, you know, you might want to remain in academia and some of our students do do that. But typically, most people are looking for um, building their career prospects and they want to have um, a successful career in the future. And in a lot of our students' cases, um, a global career as well. You know, our, our students are very mobile typically and do, do move around. So we find it really important to make sure that you're well connected. Uh, so we host an annual career fair um, that has taken place digitally the last couple of years. We've been able to invite in guest speakers, hold CV workshops, for example, um, and invite companies in from our industry network who are either hiring, but can also just perhaps broaden your horizons on what careers are out there, um, how you get into them, what skill sets people are looking for, how to handle yourselves in interviews. Um, and there's quite a lot of emphasis on this style um, of preparation. And you mentioned from our um, through the School of Business introduction, you will have heard that we offer those two master's programs there. And actually within our student body, we do have um, working professionals as well. So we try and promote across those master's programs in particular, opportunities for networking as well, and perhaps uh, devising career connections too. So that's really important to us um, that upon graduation, you are successful in what you're looking to do with your future goals and aspirations. Um, you can use our alumni association for that as well. You become an alumni not only of Prague City University, but also of Teesside University if you've studied on one of those British um, degree programmes. And just to maybe say as well that if you are on one of those programmes, um, all the bachelor's degrees take three years to complete and the master's, as you heard, could take anywhere between um, 12 to 18 months or two years in our School of Art and Design. So there is really the opportunity to graduate through to that master's level and have your CV kind of ready to go um, within a four year period if you're now looking to study with us from the bachelor's degree level. And so moving on, we just want to now talk a little bit about um, Prague. So some of you joining us, we already know, are uh, watching this from uh, across the globe. Some of you might be just down the road. Um, but in terms of our campuses, we do have um, three campuses. You've already seen some of the video footage from Bishop's Court. There's also um, a postgraduate school of art and design studio um, in a different area of Prague as well. Um, as well as our Polska campus in Prague too. So you could be based um, across sort of two locations or but typically most students have one of the campuses which is their base. So that's why those other university wide events are really important to make sure that you're across all the spaces. And Prague is obviously a capital city within Europe. So we recently hosted our um, welcome to the semester uh, party in a venue across the city. And we really um, encourage students to try and take advantage of what Prague actually has to offer. So that's not just our um, art and design studios, but for example, there is here, um, there's a media production studio that's here um, that students can go and visit. There's lots of culture here to be involved with. Um, different events and different um, work events as well that might be related to your studies. So there's lots of opportunities that Prague as a city uh, presents for students to benefit from as well that might complement the subject area that you are studying. We do appreciate that, um, as I mentioned, English is typically the, the dominant language across the university, um, but we do have uh, Czech speakers not only in admissions, in, in my colleague Anna here, but um, also uh, across the university administration as well, and particularly in student services, because we do understand that if you are moving um, or relocating, even from another part of the country, um, it can take some time to, to settle in, or you might have questions or need some assistance. So we do have um, a dedicated team in our student services team. And we have a week before the semester starts where you have the opportunity to meet all the other new students who are starting, meet the student council um, that Anna was talking about just before, find out what societies are running, um, orientate yourself in the city, make sure you get the bank account set up if you need one, a mobile phone, 
these kind of practical activities. So we support you with that um, every step of the way, basically. So we take a personal approach to admission. So we'll work with you individually. And that really continues once you start your studies as well. And you'll have a dedica dedicated study advisor um, who is there for you um, to support you throughout your studies as well, should any questions come up or you need any additional support. So hopefully, if you, if you would be moving um, here, then that transition, we try and make that as smooth as possible for you. And in terms of accommodation, um, if you would be looking for accommodation, um, the demand is quite high within Prague, but we can um, recommend you some places to look if you're going to be trying to find your own apartment. Typically for international students, we do recommend um, trying to find a place in a student residence or booking through one of the websites that um, or the platforms you can see on the screen right now. Um, typically, the cost is anywhere between um, sort of 350 to 450, depending on the room type and where you stay uh, per month. There are different options available depending on your budget as well. Um, so as I mentioned, we can uh, try and help you if you are uh, looking for that to promote ideas, but we do recommend, um, particularly if you're listening to this and looking for September 2022 entry, uh, if you kind of apply earlier, it, it's better for you just to know what accommodation you will be in and have your place secured. And if you're listening to this and you're still interested in um, the February 22 semester, then please do get in touch with us as soon as possible to kind of talk about your accommodation um, and what might suit you best and what's available. Um, because like I said, the, de the demand can be, can be quite high, but we'll try and support you where possible to make sure that you have um, a place upon your arrival. So at this point, I would be, um, we can show you also a short um, video for those of you that maybe are, um, haven't been to Prague before, uh, just to kind of see, see the city and a little bit about the student experience. And then after that, I'm going to be handing over to my colleague Alice to just talk through um, the next kind of rounds for admission, uh, the application process before a few closing remarks. And we've had a few questions coming through. So if you do have any more, please feel free to keep writing those to us and we'll make sure that um, either address verbally at the end or um, send you a chat reply as well. Thanks, Alice. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed a little tour around Prague um, and the opportunities. So I'll be talking a bit more about, yes, the admission deadline. We'll start for uh, the ones that are applicable to visa students. Um, so let's have a look here. We have um, two intakes for the next year. We have February, 2022 and September, 2022. As you can see for February, um, the deadline is approaching. So we do recommend keeping this date in mind, 31st of October and trying to uh, complete your application process by that time. Um, typically for visa students, um, the process can take 
um, around 90 days um, for your visa application to be pro pro processed from the moment you submitted your application and your documents. So um, if you cannot meet the 31st of October 2021, we do recommend applying by the end of November or middle of November at the latest. For uh, September 2022, as you can see, there's still plenty of time. Um, early registration period is, is not finished yet. It is the 30th. 30th of November 2021. Um, and as you can see um, at the bottom part, there are bonuses that you can get. Um, so we always recommend applying as, soon, as early as possible. Um, for example, let's say for September 2022, if you meet the 30th of November deadline, um, you can get a, an 8% discount on your first semester fees or plus 25% of the awarded amount if you applied for a scholarship. There is also a 20% or a 10% uh, available, depending on when you um, complete the admission process. And of course, for the discount, it could be also either five or three. Um, and now if we move to the um, deadlines for our EU students and local students, um, there are a couple of um, rounds available at this moment for February 2022. As you can see, uh, round two is not finished yet. And there is also round three and the late registration period available. And also for uh, September 2022, it is, there is also still plenty of time to apply. And uh, as you can see on the bottom as well, the same uh, bonuses available if uh, you wish to secure your place at an earlier date. Um, yes, yeah, so now I would like uh, to move forward and uh, give you, tell you a bit more about the documents you would need to apply and the first steps. Um, so once you decide that you're ready to apply, the first thing that you would need to do is to submit the required documents. Uh, the first thing would be a confirmation of completed education. So it could be a high school diploma if you're applying for a bachelor's degree or a foundation diploma, or uh, it is a bachelor's degree if you're applying for a master's. Then there is proof of English. We accept IELTS, TOEFL, um, or equivalent documentation. Um, then there is a letter of motivation. It is 300 words minimum for a bachelor's degree and 500 for a master's program. Then there is a copy of your passport. And also, as already my colleague Anna mentioned, if you're applying to a school of art and design program, you will need a portfolio. If you're interested in the portfolio requirements, we'll be happy to send you the via, via email. Um, for your the program of your choice. If you're applying for a master's degree, you would also need to submit a CV and a couple of letters of recommendation. And uh, once you submit uh, these documents, we will review them. And if everything meets the requirements, we will arrange the final interview with the program leader. Um, and if you successfully pass this interview, we will send you an offer to study and confirm um, that you've been accepted. Okay, thank you, Alice. So hopefully um, the event today has given you a insight into some of our programs, what you can expect if you study at our university and the types of events and student-led um, initiatives that are happening. There's a lot more than we even mentioned today, just thinking through now, we have a student magazine that we haven't talked about and lots of other things. So as I said, if you do um, want to go into more detail about your program, or specifically um, talk about perhaps a portfolio or which program might suit you best if you're thinking about finance and international management, for example. Um, we would be very happy to have um, an individual call with you as your um, admissions advisors or set up a call with a current student. And to kind of end, I just really wanted to touch upon how we are teaching actually right now um, and how we're looking ahead to teach as well. So, Currently, face-to-face um, -face teaching is happening um, here on campus, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, the corridors are filled with students. Um, of course, we are taking um, precautions against COVID-19. Um, 
with mand mandatory um, mask wearing in the common spaces, um, proof of either vaccination or negative testing for access onto the campus. Um, there is new air filtration systems in our classrooms as well, um, as well as the ventilation through opening windows and so on. So we are taking the approach still very seriously and we want face-to-face -face teaching to continue um, for, of course, as, as long as possible throughout the whole academic year. Um, the Czech Republic continues to welcome students from not only the EU, but internationally as well. Obviously, Alice mentioned um, that deadline there. If you are a visa seeking student um, and you're considering February entry, please do write to us as soon as possible because um, visa applications are open um, across the world and we can let you know what the situation is at your local embassy uh, and hopefully still get you to apply uh, on time to start your studies in February uh, here in person if the programme that you're applying to uh, is, is designed for in-person teaching. Um, if there would have been any uh, delays, then we do have a digital campus. That's what some of our students are studying in um, currently or studying in hybrid format. But actually, as we are looking ahead to the 2022 academic year, um, we are expecting our face-to-face -face teaching to to continue but if you have any specific questions about your uh, situation or moving then please let us know but of course for September 2022 uh, at this point we are you know lo looking ahead and expecting to continue our uh, teaching given that the health restrictions allow and similarly for February uh, we do anticipate that to continue and at the moment um, a question has just come through regarding uh, vaccinations so we are continuously following the travel restrictions for example so if you do require a visa or even if you're just traveling from within Europe and you need advice on that we keep very up to date with the measures so when you're planning your arrival in Prague we can let you know exactly um, what's needed but for general information at the moment for travel um, if you are vaccinated by a an EMA, so a European Medical Association approved vaccine, um, typically you can travel uh, with, with proof of this without uh, quarantine, depending on the country that you're traveling from. Uh, if you're not vaccinated, then there might be testing uh, requirements. But once you have your valid visa in hand, you can obviously travel into the country. And as I said, uh, applications are open and the, e the European borders are also open. So if you would be moving here for studies, uh, it's definitely possible. Uh, teaching is happening within the classroom um, and we do envisage to continue with with face to face teaching for as long as that's possible. So really, that remains um, for me to say is to thank you very much for your uh, time and attending the event today. If you have any immediate questions, you can see our email addresses on the screen now. We'd be very happy to hear from you and get back to you. Um, before we do end, just going to take a couple of minutes to see if we have any other um, questions which are coming through and we can hopefully answer those. And if you are asking specifically around um, kind of the, the vaccination and quarantine. I think it's probably better if we do follow up with you over email, just so we can find out exactly uh, what, what your status is, what your situation is and where you would be traveling from. But typically, if you are fully vaccinated with a European medical approved agency vaccine, there is no need to undertake um, self-isolation for a period of time here. Um, but that is, of course, uh, subject to change as the situation uh, develops, which we all just have to um, wait and see. But our colleagues um, across the university, we are monitoring this and uh, we will let you know as and when it's applicable for you to, to be moving and traveling to visit us. If any of you do uh, want to visit us in person, if you're listening today and that's feasible for you uh, to get to us and actually see the campus, we'd be very happy to host you as well. Um, so thanks once again for joining us and I think I can't see any other um, questions so we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day or evening thanks once again to Alexa Alice and Anna uh, for all your input today and we all hope to hear from you soon and hopefully see you in Prague as a Prague City University student in the future thanks very much thank you everyone thank Have a you nice evening bye <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye.